Oh my goodness, we are live. We are live, everyone. Thank you, uh, Marnie, for being here. Marnie is the wing girl. She's your personal wing girl. And this is another episode of Lockdown Love, where I interview celebrities, influencers, and you know entrepreneurs on how on on everything that they're doing to impact the world, and more importantly, what they're doing during the pandemic. So, Marnie, I mean, you guys have no idea what we were doing before we went live. <laughs> what I'm doing during the pandemic is sweating when I try to do any of these I'm, live events with my kids in the background. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's oh, crazy. my goodness. Well, you know what's so funny? That's my very first question. What is life like as a mompreneur? Right now? Chaotic. Yes. I, I can't breathe. I... <laughs> um, <laughs> It's actually very interesting, and I, I, I'm i assuming you have a, a, a similar spin on this. There are ups, there are downs, there are crazy moments where you're like, whoa, I cannot believe that I just did that. Yes. For both my business and for being a parent. Uh, so it, there's just like this this crazy roller coaster of things that are happening. But overall, I will say it is chaotic because there is no moments to rest. Yeah. And just for, for our audience sake, uh, it might be helpful to know how many and how old I'll, I'll start 12 with 12 kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I'll, I'll start by sharing. I think my audience knows me, but if, if you're a first time lit, uh, watcher, uh, I have a 21 year old, a 15 year old and a three year old who's going to be turning four. So I have a, I have a child in every demographic. What about you, Marnie? I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. Mm. So, I mean, for you, I, I just, for you, you have it all over the place. Like every, every, well, this is why I'm, this is why angle. I'm, this is why I'm day drinking, to be oh, honest. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. That, oh, my goodness. That's how I was surviving in the beginning. I don't even drink a lot, but for some reason, I drank for a whole month straight. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, and Marnie, you, what was your journey to becoming a coach? And I want to ask, this is a two-part question, because I want to know if you've always started with men or if there was ever a time that you coached women. So what was your yeah. journey? In, in my journey was that I fell into this by accident. I, I did not have a dream of being a wing girl to men and advising them on how to get girls, you know, from the, the age of 14. I accidentally made a joke when I was at a singles mixer where nobody was talking to each other. And I started grabbing men and help start conversations with women and then help facilitate the conversation and then walk away when it was going well and then giving feed feedback if needed. And I made a joke at the end of the night because... I just, I loved it. I thought it was so fun what I was doing. And I said to my roommate who was an entrepreneur and he was a guy. And I said, I want to be a wing girl. I think that, that I could do that for guys. And so I that literally, that it. literally happened at that party yep. and you labeled yourself wing girl. Now it's 2020. Do you remember the year? Cause I don't know how long you've been doing this. I have been <clears> doing it since 2004. So a wow. very long time, yeah. Okay. So the, the, the term wing, I mean, I don't even, the, the term wing girl is really only labeled for me because everybody else labels themselves as wing woman. I, I chose girl for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, but my roommate said to me, there's not a chance that guys are going to want to do that. They don't want to hear from women what women want. It, it's useless. Hundreds and thousands of men that you've coached later. Exactly. But anyway. But you know uh, what? That was the best thing he could have said because if he would have said yes, I would have been like, ha, 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 I'll be a wing girl. And then I would have moved on from it. But he said no and challenged me, which is like my go-go juice. And so I said, I don't think you're right. And I went into my bedroom. I posted an ad on Craigslist. This is in 2004. Wow. On Craigslist. And by the next morning, I had over 75 guys who were like, what's a wing girl? I want a wing girl. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah. And so it, it, it started and it, I didn't even have a phone at that point. And I was like, I had do this you, business. Like, it was do crazy. you remember what you charged? Like wh what would you have charged in 2004 to a guy that well, like, I, like what did you charge? I do remember because we played around with price points. The next oh, amazing. Day we got all those. Okay. So okay. I got to hear it was this. Like, it was like 150 for three hours with me where I'll take you out. Then it was 250 with me and another wing girl. And then I got up to 450, which most people did not take because they were like, I'm on Craigslist. Why are you charging $450? <laughs> so that, that's when you decided you needed an actual website, right? <laughs> right, exactly. But at the time I was in PR, so I knew how to get press. 
So that Amazing. was the first thing that I did before even having a website, which was so silly. Um, but then slowly over time, I moved my business from a live service where I would go out in person with guys. And I had 23 girls that I had, had hired as well in the first six months of running my company where we would go out and help pick up women for you and coach you on the side. And, and this is I, in yeah. 2004 when yeah. there like online dating wasn't even that rampant then. I like it really know. was, it wasn't, it didn't eat, online dating really just boomed in the last 10 years. Oh, yeah. right. You were so the, you were the weirdo if you were using, which I was, I remember I used, I went on to J date for the first time, no picture up because I was like, <laughs> I'm not putting my picture out there. That's, that's the year that this was in. And so over time I moved it from a live service when I realized that so many men needed more coaching and in order for them to be real so men, amazing. they had to do it on their own. So I, 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 moved it over to at-home systems that I now sell to hundreds of thousands of men all over the world. You do. You do. Yeah. And that was my next question. What kind of person hires a dating coach? It's two-part. And for a lot of people, a lot of people don't even know still today what a dating coach is. So if you can answer that for me, A, who hires one and B, what does one do? Well, I say that awesome people hire <laughs> okay. dating coaches yes! because- because awesome people who really value themselves, who who are, are really confident in themselves, and you Love would think that. it would be the other way, but people who are not ashamed to say, you know what, I need help in this category. I'm going to go seek out somebody that I trust and value and who, who I want to listen to their advice. So I think that, again, strong, confident people use dating coaches and coaches all around. Um, and then what is a dating coach? I actually don't consider myself a dating coach because I'm not helping men and women. It's not the dating process that I'm advising on. I'm, right. an, attra I'm an attraction coach for men of every level, whether they're single, whether they're married, whether they're divorced. I'm teaching men how to get the girl, keep the girl make her happy and make yourself happy. So that's amazing. So there's a big, there is a distinction in what you do. You've realized you're the attraction coach, attraction expert. So a dating coach in, by your definition is someone who probably, who helps both men and women in the broader spectrum of yeah. dating, not just isolated to finding and keeping that person. Yeah. And I, you know what the truth is, is that as you know, from what you do, mm -hmm. you have a label, but you end up doing so much more. Sure. So I, I'm sure in every way we're all doing the exact same thing. I sure. just don't see myself as a dating coach. But to answer your question that you had before of whether or not I've worked with women, I do have a couple of programs that I have created with women. I don't coach women. Got but it. I I've taken but you've the got some programs. Yeah, because I've taken the information that I've learned from men because I started to see that my own advice to my female friends was shifting the more that I got into the work with the men. And because yeah, I, mean, I was you, gaining all this insight. Yeah. And absolutely. so I, I started seeing myself no longer saying to my girlfriends, oh, you deserve better. He did this, this, and this. But I started shifting it to, well, that's not how men work. Did you do this? And exact okay, love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. What, so I was going to ask you that. What are some of the lessons that you've learned as you were building your coaching business from start to now? I mean, this might be a lot, but just maybe hit some key points. Lessons about my clients or lessons about like business? lessons about your business that that you've well that you've shifted. Huh. There's a million, but the biggest, <laughs> the biggest lesson that I have learned is that you have to do what number one makes you happy and okay. number two, what feels good to you. There was a long period of time because this is back in 2004 and this is, yeah, just, I mean, I'm, I'm not great at math, but that's about 16 years that oh, yeah. just, so I was just seven. letting you know, <laughs> I know I was, I was eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so internet marketing had started, not like it is now, where it's so sophisticated now, but, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, all these people who were in my field, who were either coaches or internet marketers, it was, it was split down the line. There weren't a lot of people that were both, meaning like business people and coaches. Sure. And that, you know, the, the, the mesh between was few and far between. And I was in this marketing group with all of these 
business people or internet marketers and I was a coach and I would struggle so much because they would talk about all these things and I would try to do them. I would beat myself up for it. I would be down on myself and that would have a major impact on my business because my energy would be much lower. My confidence was lower when it came to myself as a businesswoman. And at a certain point, I just said, screw it. Like I have to do what feels right for me. Screw the split testing, screw the optimization, screw the affiliates, all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I have to do what works best for me. And that yeah. was creating content and doing media. Uh, and then as soon as I focused on that and shifted gears and shifted where I was putting my money into, it just transformed. It is. Business. Honestly, I have these questions lined up and you are organically leading me to the next question, oh, which good. is insane. Well, that's how, what we click. I know. How did you build a YouTube channel that currently has 513,000 subscribers? How long did that take? And give me just the, the high level points. Well, this is where you will see that I am not a strategic business owner. I just started using YouTube for fun. And okay. I would post these videos every like three months. I would never look at the stats. I never saw who was coming from the website. So did I, this start in 20 in 2004 or did you start? Five. Okay. So a year after probably. you were doing, you had been out in the field, I'll call it. You had your ladies, your other wing woman, wing girls. You had your wing yeah. girls. You now you started the YouTube channel and it literally, you didn't have the end in mile that you, in sight no. that you were going to monetize this thing or whatever. No. You know what I was doing okay. for? Free what roasting of, of videos. That's why. <laughs> so I would create these videos and I'm like, ah, I don't want to overload my site. I'm going to put them on YouTube and then I can show people them and tell them to go there or then I can um, embed them onto my site. And it's not my streaming fees. It's on YouTube and it's fine and it won't. Again, over there was some strategy in there. You were thinking about yes. that. Yes. yes. I'm a big I let, you, let YouTube pay was. for my bandwidth. I'm not paying for my own bandwidth. Exactly. <laughs> and then I think, oh, I would say 2010. So a very long time down the road. And I, I did have many videos that were getting so many views. Yeah. Talk to me about your first vi – did you ever have a viral video? Was there a video that you would have considered viral? I know you have some videos that – Yes. Uh, that are a million reach or 500,000? Oh, I, I have a bunch that are a million and 500,000, but I have um, one that happened January amazing. 1st. Yeah, January this 1st, year? 2019. Oh my 2019, gosh. Okay, what was the title? It, uh, Title's everything. 99% of all women are turned on by this. Oh my God, I want to click. I want to watch yeah. this video right now. Well, oh my God. Yeah, and then it was, it, I forget, but it was, it's reached six and a half million views now. But in the first Amazing. four days, it was up to three or four million at that point. So that was really cool. But I had had other videos. And actually, I'm going to yes. take that back for a sec because I had done lots of work with Ask Men and I had created I, these yes. videos with them. And I think you did that too, but I had created these videos with them and then I would just take their videos and put them onto YouTube. Like there was no strategy behind what I was doing. And about 2010, when, uh, what are they called? Like the BBTVs and the- um, A broadcaster? Like a broadcaster? They're, they're, they're like a conglomerate for YouTubers. So basically they help manage your channel. And if your channel gets shut down, they call YouTube right away. They just have a direct line to YouTube. They Not help with sure. cross promotions. I forget what they're called, but they take like 10% of whatever you make in your revenue. Okay, and, got it. So yeah, they're so they're like an aggregator. I mean, they take they take your in they take your YouTube video, they know they learn how to publish it or to get it distributed, and then they take a percentage of whatever revenue from those views or whatnot. Yeah. They don't, someone, really, they don't okay. really do very much, but okay. that, that is how they pitch themselves. <laughs> but they were the first per people to say to me, do you know that your videos have this many views? And if you were to post regularly, then you would get this, 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 this. this. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't know were that. You not even, were you not even getting, because uh, in YouTube, were you getting checks already or you didn't subscribe? Did you even know you could monetize your channel? I, I don't even remember if I had my monetization on at that okay. point. Probably not. And if I what? did, it was attached to an account that I, I wasn't even monitoring. Right. And so, I, like, I did, it wasn't even on – it wasn't on my radar at all to even start looking at YouTube. Is, is there a point where you actually made it a point to be strategic and then yeah. decide what year was it that you said this could be a thing? 
oh God, this feels so long ago now, but I, I think it was 2015 to be, to be honest, probably the past four years to five years, I have been posting every single week and I can, and I, I continue to, to grow my audience, but definitely last year when I had that 2019 January 1st video go up, it just exploded my, my YouTube channel. And it's, it's, it's definitely slowed down quite a bit. I made yeah. some, some mistakes with the algorithm and posted some things that were not loved by YouTube. Well, I can't wait to have a 6 million video view and I'll post it January 2020 and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I know. Well, I tried it again for this year and I was like, oh, it didn't work this Did it work? Way. I was yeah. so bummed. Yeah. But it was, it was cool. It was a very cool experience and it, it, it transformed my business as well because then I realized how much traffic was actually coming from YouTube. That's and great. And I hadn't, I hadn't realized that before. I knew, I knew it was coming, but like just how wonderful a platform YouTube can be. And the one mistake that I, I will say that I am making on YouTube that I do in every other area of my business, including right now with doing it with you, I, I don't do collaborations on YouTube. And it's something that elevates your brand and elevates awareness for- Why are you, are you amazing. afraid of doing collaborations or do you just think you don't need to do collab? Because you say it as if like you're never going to do it. Is it something I, you see yourself possibly doing? No, I, I see that format as being the same for forever. I, um, I'm always going to be me delivering a piece of advice and guidance on a specific Great. topic. I, that, that's how I always see it. My podcast, I have guests on all the time. My newsletters, I, I definitely talk about other people's uh, materials and talk about other, but YouTube, other things. But YouTube, YouTube is there. something you own and it's, it's your baby. Yeah, I think I have. That's fine. Being, what totally you're fine. doing, which is like <laughs> streaming, that will be yes. different. It's something yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. I and I was on one of your streams for one of your groups and yeah, it was they well received. You. And and they, they and they had tons of comments. So that's amazing. Yeah. They love Shifting you. a little a bit. Group. Thank you. I mean, it it doesn't matter, you know, and so a lot of times people think that the size size matters. And it's not always the case. <laughs> we'll get, we'll talk about it. that. Yeah, it's what you can do it exactly. But in in the area of engagement with an audience, if you've got a smaller audience and they're engaged and they want what you have to offer, that's that's better than, in my opinion, a huge following with no engagement and people who, you know, aren't really into what you you've got going on. So, oh, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. What Marnie has been the biggest challenge? about the pandemic in your work life. You kind of alluded to it with the kids, but is there anything else that's different or has come up for you because of the pandemic? Oh, for sure. Um, uh, balance, energy, and focus. Those are the, okay. the three biggest um, difficulties that I've had. It's just figuring out how to balance everything, um, mm -hmm. how, to, uh, how to have the energy and brain space to to own a business and to lead a business and to do things like this right now. Like I feel like 75% of my brain is, is, is here. 25% is exhausted and tired and drained and I'm not, <laughs> you know, running at my full capacity. Um, so yeah. I, and that's not that for me, that's really difficult. If I don't feel like I'm on and I'm delivering amazing advice. Um, I, I, so you're I, saying that happy. you're, you, so you are feeling the impacts of this pandemic. It's not oh, like sure. things are normal, right? Because your children aren't in school or the daycare where they used to be and yeah. hubby's at home working. Was hubby the kind of person that worked outside or are you both like we fighting both? for office space? Yeah, we both work from home. But the well, the good thing slash bad thing is he works in live events and none of those are happening right now. So he's he's taking that on and I feel very guilty about that. I will say, however, my business You feel guilty suffered. that he's taking parenting uh, responsibilities? <laughs> taking more. I, that's okay. Really, that is really yeah. challenging. I'm working on it with my therapist, all right? Sure. So, <laughs> but um, I my business is thriving right now. And, That's so great. And it's, it's I can't, wonderful. I, I, I would, I, I expected it to be so because dating apps and dating sites are experiencing a 30% increase. People are struggling and yeah. this is your place to shine. This is your time yeah. to shine. Well, so, but that's interesting because 
I don't feel like I am shining right now because I'm not at the 100% that I'm typically at, which I think is fine for other people. If I'm at 75%, it's still okay for them. But for me, they're lucky to have you. They're lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. Can you share um, what your experience was like being one of the main, I don't know if you were the dating coach for Ask Men and AskMen.com is a pretty serious resource. It had been for a while. So how did that come about when you were a coach? What was that process? Because I know a lot of coaches that are just starting out or even current coaches, they try to figure out what's the best collaboration? Who should I be partnering with? Can you talk a little bit about that and what the benefits were? Like maybe even pros and cons. Maybe there were cons in that. If you're allowed to There was no cons. There was no cons from that at all. It was one of the best things that ever happened to me Um, because I learned about making videos because that was Mm. really interesting for me. So isn't that great that they get to pay you to make videos that elevates your brand? Actually, they didn't like, pay me. That was okay. Also well, I was like, I don't care. I get it. This is like the eager me you, at, t- you at 23. Paid. You yeah. got paid. Yeah, exactly. And and so this came about, I told you I was, I had a background in PR. So when I had said, screw it, I'm doing what I want to do. I hired a publicist right away. That was my first thing. And I hired a you're publicist. You're 23 years old. You're, you're one year in the business and you hire a publicist or, I, so yes. this is right away. Uh, this is probably two years into it, actually. A lot of PR I was getting on my own. That was my main way of promoting myself. And did I you was take doing PR? Is that what it was? You mentioned to me something about you having. I, wor- I worked in. I worked in okay. PR. So you the weekend in. after I started my company, I went to the office. I downloaded every <laughs> men's publication and editor's <laughs> contact. I just started pitching myself, and then nobody was doing what I was doing. So there was a lot of momentum off of the PR that I had done. So in, in the first few weeks, I was on hold for the Tonight Show. I what? Was in, you were I on was, the Tonight Show? No, we never ended oh, up doing that. We, we did like a, prelimin- a preliminary Have you been on Good Morning America them. and Today's Show? Like, do you have some, what are your biggest, what was, what in your mind was your biggest appearance? Um, uh, what was and this is about? you were young. I, so. Yeah, I I hosted Love Line for a week. Um, oh God, I was so you there. did all the local stations. You've done you've done. Yeah. Well, Ask Men was really I was, big. I was in the L.A. Times. I was in amazing. Uh, I was in an article on in Forbes. I was in Men's Health. I was in like every male publication. So uh, great. I was a writer for FHM. I, I, like I did, I did a ton of, I haven't done this stuff in so long, but I, I did a lot of stuff. I thought it was really cool when I was on uh, CNN. Um, oh, hello. Yeah. And I, I I'm waiting for the, my CNN signal. Yeah. <laughs> I was on Dr. Drew. I was on the, I, so right. I, I did, I did a lot of stuff and a lot of that was from my own PR. And then it just continued because no, there weren't a lot of people doing what I was doing back then. But can I, asked, can I just oh. ask about the, the, the investment to PR because PR is relatively expensive now as a 23 so year old. Expensive. Was it also quite like, did you have to like gulp a bit and think I'm doing this? Like, was it a no. big, no. Okay. It was, knew- it was like 1500 to $2,000 a month. And the return that I got on that back then was amazing. Now, not so much because I've done okay. rounds of PR now. And I, I, well, I 1500 a month much. back then would be, I think it's almost equivalent to four to five grand a month, which I think is fairly standard. Like yeah. for 20, like 2,500 to five grand a yeah, month depending, depending on, on for you. exactly exactly yeah. like so that you, was you you recommend it if a coach can afford to do that and they've got but you also had a unique story not everybody can just right. hire a publicist and think that people are going to be interested in that right and i actually forget how i met my publicist but it w- it was the right publicist for me because he did a lot of the publicity um for porn stars <laughs> at the time. So it oh, press he, is good press, <laughs> but uh, that, that was his audience. He, and so, but he also had direct access to the men's publications. Like he, and ask men. So ask men had, had, he's friends with people there was talking to him about how, you know, all these sex therapists are so boring and Oh, they're so technical. Do you have anybody that's a little bit more dynamic? And he said, well, check out Marnie's stuff and see if you like her. And then she can totally do that stuff. And I, I was not a sex therapist back then. I researched like every, every video I made for them. I was like, Oh God, I have to crazy research this because it wasn't my area of expertise at the time. Um, but yeah, I did my first 10 videos that were very sexual stuff, but not like, like 
sex sure. therapisty, and they loved it. And then I continued my relationship with them for probably four or five years. That's amazing. This has yeah. been an interesting question. I'm interested in your opinion. What is your opinion about women who coaching men and men coaching women? Do you think it's better that the opposite sex gets coached by the opposite sex, or do you feel yes. that that doesn't matter? Yeah. Oh, well, it it depends on the information that you're trying to find out and what you're trying to improve. I think that 95% of the stuff that men need to learn, they can learn from other men and vice versa for women. But that 5%, which is like the biggest chunk of information to understand that other side uh, yes. can only be taught by the opposite sex. So I'll always say for my female friends, if they're asking me a question about a guy, I'll be like, talk to ask, my husband. Ask a guy, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. exactly. Do I look like a guy? I love that. I I agree with that. And, you know, in the past, as I'm a matchmaker, women seem have dominated the coaching and matchmaking space because oh, yeah. women want to talk to women and men want to talk to women. But I think it's it's absolutely changing now. Some of the top... Oh, female dating well meaning that some of the top female dating coaches are men matthew hussey evan oh, yeah. marcatz steve harvey like women want to hear the guy's point of view jason silver and then men you're i would say you're you're if not the top leading dating coach for men there are a handful of women that coach uh two men specifically and yeah. you are the no bullshit approach so i really love that you know how to speak guy code. Like, where did that come from? Where did the guy code, how do you feel that you you know guys so well? I think from my father and then, honestly, I, I relate so well to my clients because I used to have an insecurity around pretty girls when I was younger. And so I leaned towards being friends with guys. I always hung out with guys. I, I did the guy talk. I knew how to do the guy talk with them. And I advised them on women. And then, yes. you know, cut to however many years later and I've coached myself through getting over being intimidated by beautiful women by coaching men on how to get through. Marnie, have you process. looked in the, have you looked in the mirror, sweetheart? Like that was, I don't know. Oh, you were never you. an ugly duckling. You were never an ugly duckling. Oh, thank you. Oh my goodness. But you know, that just goes to show that it's, it's doesn't matter what other people see right? It's really our core belief and what we think because what we see in the mirror or how we feel is a reflection of like the things that are in our mind. So yeah. it's, 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 thank goodness you, as you said, coached yourself. And now I love that when you, when coaches come from a place of their own discovery and their own success story in a way, it's yeah. far more compelling. Yeah. Um, what are the common mistakes that you see men make online? We could be here all day, so let's just do three. <laughs> let's just do three. I mean, their pictures are horrible. Yeah. Uh, I think that their openers are absolutely horrendous. Um, and other mistakes are not getting off of, the, of, of whatever platform it is and transferring it to something else quickly enough. Or they do it too quickly. Their timing is off on how they escalate to those next levels because they can't sense when there's actually a connection point being made. So they mess up with the timing. Do you, uh, how, are you coaching current clients or at least are you hearing from clients about dating during the pandemic? I know when I came to your um, live, we talked a little bit about that. What are, are things consistently, um, do they have consistent complaints during this time? And what are they? What are the biggest complaints? Uh, the complaints are, oh, I can't do anything because of this quarantine. But that's a belief. It's not because they've tried to do anything. It's what they believe. But it, right. is, it is funny. I will tell you something. So in the first two weeks when I was freaking out about the pandemic and like, how am I going to pivot my company, blah, blah. And I was thinking about being so sensitive how I was talking about the quarantine. Not one person mentioned the quarantine <laughs> to me or like Corona to me. It, it, it wasn't. They were just talking about the girl that they wanted to get it. Like they, it, that was not on their mind at least when communicating with me I'm sure outside of it but the, the concerns for them were still I want to date this girl or this girl's ghosting me or this girl's not talking to me or this girl likes me and I don't know what to do so so right. that remained consistent yeah but I think the biggest belief is that quarantine means that there's no dating happening right now which is completely not true it just has shifted so your clients are dating then. Are you having to oh, yeah. tell them like how to like now instead of saying let's go on a date, 
Are you doing video date training? Are you getting guys ready to like be camera yeah, ready? That's what I brought you on for. You ah! were teaching the, the training. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because it's really, really important. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. uh, even the, the tips that you gave me, I've used them for this call right now with better Yay. lighting, better angles. Yeah. Like, that, that was really helpful for a lot of guys. And so I'm, that's how I, if, if I'm not an expert in a certain area, I bring on other people that I think are like top of the Yeah, I love to that. about it. Love that about you. And I and I feel so passionate about, hey, if I don't get an area and someone else can shed the light or is is literally better at it, I just want to, hey, come on over, yeah. teach me the thing. Now, let me ask you this. You work with men. It's interesting. We did a recent collaboration and I've gotten messages from men from 20 to like 75. You yeah. literally work with men all across the board, in multiple countries, in multiple ages, different demographics. It's insane. What do you think, is there a difference between what a millennial man struggles with to a Generation Z to Generation X? Or is there, do they suffer from the same, uh, you know, uh, issues? The core issue that I end up dealing with are beliefs in themselves and communication. So I I see that across the board and it hasn't really shifted. It may be... That's uh, what I was going to ask. The common problems among men in various age range. Yeah. So yeah, I don't really see a, a an issue that's specifically, you know, for millennials that they're struggling with the most. It really is across the board, the same things. Although the people who are older say, oh, I wish I would have nipped this in the bud <laughs> when I was in my 20s. That That's the only thing. There's like a little, a little or bit Or that more. they don't they don't look the same or they, you right. know. Right. Is it, do you find that a lot, of women complain about this a lot. Is, is, do you think it's true that older men always try to date a younger woman? I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. yeah so it is sure. true. Okay. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's no, yeah, and, and, not? and sure. And, and women do the same thing too, right? Like women want, I think there's a, people just want what they want and they always want the best. Yes. And I mean, it doesn't mean that like somebody who's 22 year old is better than a 50 year old. Sure. But, I mean, men are a little bit different. They, their a, a, attraction is based in looks primarily and about how that woman makes them them feel so is this the no bullshit coaching that you're talking about because some people will find it offensive and it's the truth i know well so i i i find like a lot of guys write and they say oh like i i'm 55 and i'm gonna make my category be 45 and up but i'm really attracted to girls when they're who are 35 i'm like then date girls who are 35 why are you limiting yourself sure that's who you like and who you're attracted to and you like their energy levels or their passion or the fact that they still want children yeah go for them why do you ever do you ever believe like how do you coach somebody that really is unrealistic with their expectations. Do you believe that someone can be unrealistic with their expectations? Because telling a 55-year-old man date a 35-year-old, that's great. But what if that 55-year-old wants to date a 20-year-old or and and someone who's clearly it. Yeah? No. Yeah, I don't I don't think anything is unrealistic. And if if you find that y- you are going after these 20 year olds and they're not liking you, something has to shift either your perspective or some a way that you're interacting with those 20 year olds. And maybe you'll find out for yourself that this works for you or it doesn't work for you. I, I think. So you is really you really coach men to getting what they want. Yeah. And yeah. figuring out what they want and realizing it's OK doesn't mean you're going to get it. Right. But that you're allowed to at least open up your mind to that space that says, yeah, I'm going to go for what I want. And then you can adjust as needed. That's amazing. I want to move into the products that you offer. What are the various products you offer to men? And what is your inspiration to creating these programs? You have, do you know, do you know how many programs you you offer? I think I have 12. Okay. How many? I forget. Yeah. Well, it really, it, de- it depends on the things that I'm hearing from my clients about what they need and then the things that I'm experiencing. So I have a new program called Beyond Attraction coming out in the next couple of weeks, which is about uh, building trust and connection with women, whether it's your sister, your girlfriend, the girl you started dating. Oh my God, your that's so great. Relationship with. And I think that that's, because it's an important s- skill set to have, just being able to connect to women, which does in turn build attraction if you're, you know, targeting the right audience for that. Um, 
but yeah, I, I go by what my, my customers need and uh, by the position in life that I'm in and what I'm knowledgeable about at that time. Right. And it's interesting that you are creating a product on connection because this is the time that we are lacking connection or are so in need of connection. Oh yeah. So sure. I think we addressed what advice you could share with men who are dating during COVID times. Uh, are you noticing, uh, like, how would you address a guy who wants to meet a woman, but she doesn't feel comfortable? I'm coming up with this a lot in my matchmaking business where one person is like, has a certain, you know, rule about, about, um, what do you call that? Oh, for, Safe for practicing, social right? Distancing. For right, social right. distancing. And someone doesn't. Does that automatically mean that their values don't align? Like, what's the way that you can coach someone in that situation where they're starting, one person starting to get frustrated with the other person's comfort level? Well, I, I think that if you're getting frustrated at that point with their comfort level, then you may have difficulties in many areas down the road. But I, I, I really don't think that if you find that you align on many other areas or many other values, then then this one uh, can be worked on. Um, so I have I have clients who take it as such uh, so, such offense to it if a woman is is not open to meeting in person, where they'll continue pushing. Hey, let's just meet or let's just do this or blah. And and, and what do you advise them on that? Don't do that. Yeah. Um, okay. But so I, I, I would say that for right now, it's a very tricky place for everybody in terms of social. I even find that for my potential play dates that like some people are like, yeah, go masks off and touch my kids. Where I'm like, no, do not do any of that and stay six <laughs> feet apart. So yeah. it's it, so, and then that that's hard to say. But I think in the very beginning, you have to hear who who's the most uncomfortable and respect what their boundaries are and say, listen, I'm totally fine with not meeting in person. Let, I, but I want to get to know you better. So. Yeah, Let's that's interesting. I, I'm just trying to figure, I'm also, you know, this is a new um, time for all of us. Even as coaches, yeah. we're trying to figure out what's, what is the best advice in this scenario? There, it's not that there's a right or wrong, but how do you come to a common ground where you're not potentially, you know, throwing away a really good opportunity just because they want to meet and you feel that they're being irresponsible with how, you know, they're treating uh, the social distancing. So it, it's, it's really, um, an interesting time. Have you ever so, given, have you ever given, what do you do in a situation? Or I'm curious if you've ever given someone advice and they've like completely rejected it, or they're actually angry about the advice that you've given. What do you do in that yes. case? Well, I haven't had anybody who's angry about the advice, but I have tons of people who are like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. And, and I even have this one email coaching client of mine who pays me for email coaching for the past three years. Okay. And every time, I, I, WB is his, are his initials. I'm throwing it out there. But a WB, comes, she loves you. She yes, appreciates I, your business and she loves you. <laughs> but here, if he's watching, I want to okay. kick him in the butt. Because right. he comes to me, he asks for advice. I tell him exactly what to do. I point out the trouble that he's having. And then he comes back with an argument every single time. And, I'm, and I'll say, did you try what I said? No. And then comes back three months later saying something of a very similar nature. Like it's just the same thing over and over and over again. And in, in the past, at certain points, if it's somebody who's like emailing me every single day, I'll, I'll say, you know what? I don't think that we're the right fit for each other because obviously what I'm saying isn't resonating with you. And I, I think that you should put your money into finding advice from somebody else. But I think that this would happen. So you have let you have oh, I ha yeah. um, broken up with clients when you're just yeah. feeling that they're just not take they're not g taking your advice. Yeah, the thing is, is that my advice only works if you use it. So right, I I I, I don't want to keep hearing that you're not getting results if you're not trying what I'm saying. And so therefore, sure. there may be it's same thing with dating. I think there's somebody better out there for you, or there's a few things that you might need to work on before you're ready to take my hundred percent. You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit more gentle with what I say than how I'm saying it right now. But um, yes. What advice would you give to men who are shy? I'm sure this comes up a lot. And yes. what can they do to overcome their shyness? Do you have a, a homework? Do they? Do you have a structure? Oh, yeah. Can you give me? Yes. Can you give us a little bit of tips there? 
Well, I was shy. So this, everything, <laughs> most of my programs start off with, with people, helping people break out of their shell and getting more comfortable in their skin and comfortable with them. So I say that shyness is a habit. It is not a trait that is like forever for you. It's not something that is who you are. You can, you can alter it if you want to. And then I have, I mean, a million different exercises on how to get over your shyness. And the one exercise that I myself had done a very long time ago was when I was in Australia backpacking and I was backpacking with a super outgoing girl who I, you know, she would go out on the balcony at the hostels and she'd come back with 10 friends and I'd be like, ah, I'm just like the sidekick. And <laughs> I want, I wanted to shake my shyness. And so my assignment to myself was going out and walking down the streets and having to say hi to 10 people. And it took me two hours the first time that I did it. And at the time, I was like a 20-year-old. So you played, a, you played a little you, game with yourself. Like that, yes. that meant you would have had to make – like you literally had to make eye contact – Oh, yeah. And, that was so hard for me. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then I have a million other exercises, sure. but I then I you can make you can do scavenger hunts. You can play eye contact chicken. There's a whole bunch of like little exercises to do on your Do you own. have a program for shy guys? I don't have it's not specifically for shy guys. And my program How to Become a Man Women Want and The Insider both have like tons, like about 20 different yeah. exercises you can do to, to to you know shake yourself out of your shell. Perfect. I'm um, have you ever – oh, no, we did that one. Um, oh, this one I wanted to ask. What do you coach guys about when it comes to their social media profiles? Do, do you touch that subject? Because I got to tell you, as a matchmaker, whenever our clients – find out about each other. We usually, when we give referrals, we do only give first name, limited information because we do actually don't want our clients Googling each other. But guess what? Right. They're so they savvy. Do. They do. And sometimes they'll come back with, here's their LinkedIn, here's their Instagram. Do you do any coaching at all on men and their social media profile? What would you say to them? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, I... I would say to them, uh, don't look like a douchebag <laughs> in your social media. <laughs> it, it all depends on what your goal is. So if, you're, if your goal is to, you know, sleep around and have fun and be casual, then, I mean, show that lifestyle to that person. And I, I would say don't have a million pictures of you with girls being like all gross. But the truth is that for some girls, that can be kind of appealing depending on what the age range is. So it's not always a negative thing. Again, it, it really depends on what their goals are, who they are, what their age range is, and what the age range is that they're going after. And then you have to adjust it from there. Perfect. And do you have advice for new coaches who are entering a very competitive dating coaching space do you think there's room for more coaches? Yes. My advice is make friends and nobody is your competitor. That's true. Mm -hmm. You can say that with 513,000 YouTube followers. <laughs> yeah. But that, that, is, that is the biggest piece of advice I have for anybody in any business. You cannot see people as your competition and like hold back what you have. You have to, you have to share. You have to... Uh, like exactly what you're doing with me right now and I did with you. Like mm -hmm. I, wa I want to put you on my platform. I want you to put me on your platform. I want to have everybody know about each other so that we can rise together. So uh, that that's my biggest piece of advice. Well, you actually um, approached me. We had a conversation before. You wanted to do something to really help singles. Is that just in your innate nature? Like did you know when you were a little girl, were you the one that – well, I know you were shy – is becoming a coach and helping people a direct result from you having had experienced what you went through as a child? Did at one point did you have a different dream as a as a little girl to be something else? What what did you think you were going to be? Or who did you I, think you were going to be? I thought I was going to be an actress or work in film and television. That was always what I wanted to do. Well, you're so, a YouTube star, so yes, right, you are. So there, I fulfilled my dream. <laughs> so I may have been shy, but I am all, I've always been very certain about myself, and I never liked the word no. And I always, I always liked coaching people. I liked playing Tetris when I was younger because I like seeing patterns and making things fit together. Um, so the, the coach side of me is, is, is a trait of mine. It has been built into my system, I think for as long as I can remember. So that was my next question. How often, or do you ever coach your partner or are there rules? Successfully? That you... No. <laughs> um, no. 
So but no. I do remember when I first started and I okay. was testing different things out and learning more about psychology. Because first, at first I was just a girl who gave you advice about women. And then I had to do research and learn things and, and understand like female psychology and male psychology and psychology in general. Um, so I would try different things out on my now husband and he'd be like, what? wait. You're, you're trying something on me right now, aren't you? And I'm like, no. It's, <laughs> no, no, did he know fine. Did he know you were trying something or you literally were you literally were like trying something? I was trying something yeah. on him because I would be different and I would, I would talk to him differently. Like I remember when I first started learning about saying to a man like the word happiness or I want you to do this, like just speaking more directly. And I would just use these, these words. I'd say hero as well. Like quite often he'd be like, wait, wait, what, what? You're doing, you're tricking me right now. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just trying to You're say, playing you mind games. Yeah. Don't use your coaching stuff yeah. on me. Yeah, he's like, do you like it? No, but, um, but yeah, I, it's very hard to coach your own husband. And that, I will say like other, even my own coaches that I have, like we have a, a couples coach. Um, she says that. Everyone needs biggest, a couples coach oh, and, yeah. a, and a therapist. I have, I have both. <laughs> yes, exactly. You just need, why? Why not have help and talk to other people? Talking to girlfriends is wonderful. Talking to other friends is wonderful. But there is something different about a coach, a good coach who points you in the right direction, calls you out on your, you know, BS, um, and just helps you move along and progress the way that you want, even if you can't see it for yourself. So even even our own couples counselors, like, oh gosh, I'm saying this to you, but I have a hard time with my like. It's just you have a, a you, you you can't help but be a coach and want to coach your partner, and they can't help but want to reject everything. <laughs> that you want to do. I um I want to know we're 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 going to be wrapping up soon and I want to know what's next for you and and actually before we say what's next for you you actually have so much going on and I don't think we really talked about everything that you have going on. So so you can you just do a rundown of everything that you have happening and then what is next? What's on the agenda? Oh gosh, what's next? You're like my business coach right now. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so the thing. Well, I start going start on, starting with yes, the, the podcast, the this, the that. What do you got going on? Yeah, so I have a, a great podcast called Ask Women, which has a 95% male audience, but it is so fantastic. All of my materials are fantastic for women, but this this podcast specifically is wonderful for women to listen to because you get to hear what men are most confused with. And, are and you have a co you have a most. co host with Ask Women, yes. right? Yes, who is okay. a comedian. She's amazing, but she's actually become a coach herself now and become because she's a comedian, so she's a, she's a banter expert for teaching. Oh guys how to my banter. god, so that's great. Yeah, she's wonderful. So. I I have that. I do my Facebook lives for people who purchase programs of mine for my private members group. I have uh, my YouTube channel. I have a newsletter that I have to write every single day that goes out. Wait a to... second. You do you sleep? Because I subscribe to no. your YouTube. You, I, I subscribe to you and I'm thinking you must have a ghostwriter. Do you actually write that stuff? Do you like no. talk to Siri and, and dictate it or are you doing I this? used I used to. I actually don't anymore. But I have to program them. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So I so I don't. There's, I have a lot of like repurposed content. And I, I mean, I will. I do about four emails a week. That is my own writing and then I have about three emails a week that are from other ghostwriters. Is, is is that intentional like you wanted to 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 say to be in their head every day that yeah. clearly is an in, an intentional thing yes yes because it I mean I don't know if you want me to see from a coach's point of view or like yeah a yeah point for of view, sure. but like it makes you more money I fought it for so long for there sure there were so so many people who were like you should mail every day I'm like oh, I don't want to overwhelm my list they get these auto responders and then like I send I send three emails out a week as soon as I started emailing every single day things changed yeah but you know what that says and it says to me and I'm not I'm just a fan like I'm literally just a fan and coaches sometimes want to see what other coaches are doing and I'm not a uh, I think anybody who's giving advice in my realm uh, to men and women just makes it better and easier for me as a matchmaker if you are a more sure. informed dater conscientious dater confident dater it makes matchmaking so much easier I think matchmakers and coaches should be working together because I'm just going to send you all the people that Marty, this yeah. person needs your confidence coaching program. Right. So that being yeah. said, I think it's, they also appreciate that as a business owner, you care for like, even though there's an impact to your revenue, it's because you continue to give them information. Yeah. That's why there's a direct, oh, you, um, you know, that. reflection. 
For yeah. sure. Um, yeah. All right. And then what else is next? You got the email. Well, I want to start doing what you're doing. So You're going to be doing it. <laughs> I will be doing it. So I've got my my Logitech and I'm going to start streaming um, to Instagram. Oh, you bought it? Did you? Everything was supposed yeah. to be like, like, like out of, sorry, no. out of stock. So this is, okay, so this is so interesting. So like the week after we did our call, I had the, the Logitech in my shopping cart. And it was like $300 or something. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll buy, I'll buy it later and do it. I'm not going to do streaming right away. That next week, I had a client who is also on YouTube who is a streaming expert. Oh, my God. Keith, are you, are you guys doing exchange of services right now? Well, no, but no, he just, he's like, I love your channel. I want to help you. I was like, okay. And that's and so he's, great. He's like, I happen to have four Logitechs here. Do you want me to send you one? I was like, <laughs> okay. And like, then I bought him like a nice are, Amazon. Are you, and, are you on, uh, is that your Logitech that you're on now? Yeah, that's what I'm you look using great. Right now. Yeah, you know why? You. It's it's the wide angle. You can see a lot. You can see a lot I, more. I used it. I used it for my Facebook Live the other day, and I could see the difference in the coloring for sure. I I was gonna have my husband. This is supposed to happen last night, and then we just fell asleep. We didn't have it, <laughs> but we're gonna set up my office so that I do have like better lighting in here because I love like the full system that you have. Just so that it's yeah. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand or realize what you know. In order for a production or a live stream or things to happen like there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background and it's the same as if you were going on a date as we coach people it's like if you just think you're going to turn your computer on and impress somebody without being mindful of what's going on like it's not going to happen so no. to look like this we we had to well, figure some things out right well, even this i'm like oh god i'm sweating right now My hair's horrible. <laughs> okay. but yeah it, it, like, but that, it's this pandemic is, but, times yeah and but even before like i could hear your family in the background i can hear my family in the background it's just it, i mean they're doing it on <laughs> ellen degeneres so i feel like we yeah can do it as exactly well, so okay. no when i see the worst is when you see like little not little feet but hands and people and sometimes i'm like, like the, the, you can't see the camera camera angle but my, if my partner comes here, I'm like, I don't want to see your face in my screen. <laughs> We're supposed to be in a private conversation. I know. But anyway, that's that's incredible. How does everybody reach you? I, I put there at Wing Girl Method for your Instagram. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Your YouTube is Marnie Kinris. Is that, yeah, see, is that see accurate? See how unstrategic I was? I used yeah. my full name on YouTube But if you Google, channel. if you, not Google, but if you go to YouTube and go uh, Personal Wing Girl or Marnie. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, you come up. up right away. You yeah. come up. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah, they, right. can go to, they can go to winggirlmethod.com. And then if they sign up for my newsletters, they find out about everything through there. Great. And when can we expect to see your first live stream and are you going to interview guys or are you going to also just other experts like like take your take your podcast to video form well i think i wanted to do my viewers i wanted to have them come on but Love i have to see that. how open they are to that and i was going to try this is where the uh, collaborations come in this is where i wanted to be strategic for once in my life on youtube and collaborate with other youtube people that's to, so great yeah so have them come on and coach as well and then give their feedback so well that you know what that's smart because it's not really on your platform but you're taking them it actually live streams to youtube yeah. did you know that well, Yes, it does. Okay. I know, the, the, I know this this stream yard is fantastic and I didn't know it existed before because I, I I could I have Zoom right now and you can only do it on Facebook or yes. on YouTube. You can't do it at the same time, but this this um lets you do it on I have, all at the I same have time. to credit my first guest of Lockdown Love, which I created this in the pandemic, and that was Paul Brunson. He oh, used stream yeah, he used StreamYard. And he told me about it. And I'm like, you can stream to five platforms at the same time. I'm like, that's insane. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my friend, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is about me. the this is the longest amount of time that we can keep our kids settled and our partner settled and everything else. <laughs> so we will see you next time. And I can't wait to see you do your show live. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me on. You're Bye, welcome. Guys. Bye.